Let me say a special greetings and a special welcome to all of you here already. It's always a pleasure to have you each and every Saturday, just about that time, in the listening and viewing audience. I always appreciate the time that you make to be here with me each and every Saturday from just about the 6 o'clock hour Dominicans. Those of you on this blessed rock from the north, the east, the south, the west, and even the center, this blessed rock. Those of you as well in the region, that is the space in which we live, one Caribbean space where we share a number of things in common as a people. And also, those of you further afield, those of you looking on from elsewhere it's always a pleasure to have you guys on board each and every time how we do it dominicans is that um and non-dominicans alike is that this program is geared at bringing you the information i must qualify the information the factual information that is to the best of my ability especially surrounding or pertaining to things that pertains to our country dominica yeah we also touch sometime on regional matters, international stories as well, but primarily we stick to the local issues and bring you guys the much needed information that you may not hear anywhere else because of, for whatever reason or reasons, but you will sure to hear it here, yeah? So Dominicans, we are ready to go. And so again, I want to thank you guys for taking time off, yeah? Today, being the 20th, 20, day of July, 2024, basically the year is slowly but surely creeping by, yeah? Pat Corbett says, I just had my cup of black coffee, and he's waiting, and he's welcoming each and every one. Let me just see if I can touch some of you who I can see there by name as well. On the live feed, we have uh, a number of persons here already. Carol Olivachi Bruni, Albert Regis, Rosa Robinson, Kishma D, good evening to you, Florence Francis, Lucina McDowell Thole, always there, good evening, Patricia Fontaine, Eliza Lewis Gomes, Day Jojo, good evening to you, Brother Zed Lloyd, Leonard Augustine, Clarolyn Warrington says hello everyone. Uh, we also have here Jason, Mr. Jason Fontaine up there in the east, good evening to you, my bro. Bernard Aline, I hope you're doing very well in the cold, yeah? Some, some miles away from us, at least five hours as well in terms of your time. But we always happy to have you on board. Marvel Defoe, you're also the irres irresistible. Uh, Cordelia, Georgine Maxwell, Alan Pierre, Rosa Robinson, I think I taught you already. Brother Lipson Massicot, long time to hear, long time to see, but always good to have you on board. Margretta Joseph, Marvella Defoe, Pat Corbett, I touched you already. Kenda, Nicholas, Simeon, George, Estrella, Opendi, yes. Christine Brunette, Alison John Baptist, Merlin Gordon, Natalie Soon Wing, good evening to you. Justina James, Grace Law, Celia Douglas, Horace Chambers, good evening to you, my brother. Indeed, to have you on board. Uh, Francisca Deluge, Marshall, Marshu Lawrence, Magdalene, Augustine, Bevin Seja, Jan Jan Joseph, Allison, John Baptist, Loving Lise, good evening, Emma, Olive, Shirley, Joseph, Brother Margel Durand, Yvonne Abel says good evening, Lofty, good evening to you as well. Mali Ostry says good evening to everybody. Gilda Miller, my past classmate, good evening to you. Uh, David Jennifer Defoe, Jonella Defoe, uh, who else we have here? Uh, Lipson, I mentioned you, Joanne, John Baptist, you are there in the listening and viewing audience, Tessa, John Baptist as well, Brother Dion from the Portsmouth area, Mr. Brewster, good evening to you, he says he's here, Adrina, yes, Franklin, Idona, Tamika, John Baptist, Clyde Gregoire, Magali, John Jules, Brother Levers Esprit says here, Lofty, appreciate your efforts of information. Thank you for that. Gandhi Deluge, Ivinia John Baptist says, good night, Lofty. And the list goes on and on and on in terms of those of you who are already here. What I always ask, Dominicans, 
is that don't keep this private. Don't keep the conversation to yourself. Yeah, please do your bit by sharing that live information so that others can know that we are on and we're having that all-important conversation each and every Saturday, yes? Uh, those of you names I did not mention, it was not intentional. Maybe your name did not pop up. You're there looking. Some of you look in that mode, the incognito mode, whereby you're just there. But I can see your name popping up, so if you choose to view in that mode as well, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Dominicans, we're going to have a, a very interesting two-hour segment tonight. First and foremost, on the international front, we have been hearing much talk and seeing in real time as well the discussion as it relates to the America politics, as it were. And we're going to zero in down this evening on the situation where an apparent attempt was made on the life of Donald John Trump, that is the 45th president of the America past that is so we're gonna just talk a little on that because that has been on the lips and mouths of a number of people across the globe what I can tell you guys straight off the bat is that that conversation that I'm going to entertain you guys with this evening I know politics and religion you see these two subjects they are really divisive subjects and so whenever one choose to go in that direction with either, then you can get some people mad or you can get others glad. The purpose for tonight's conversation, it is to basically go over some things that happened at the attempted assassination of Donald Trump. It is not a situation where we're going to go Republican or Democrat, who I support, who you support. No, we, we're not going down there. Something happened. Some person believe as well it did not happen as a fast. But based on what I saw, and I, I, I chose to speak about it this time, because I, I had to give myself some time to digest what I was seeing and make my own thoughts about it. And so I think I'm feeling much more comfortable now, having listened, having scrutinized, having watched, and as well did my own analysis of what went on. So, 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 so that is the line, that is the tone of the conversation that I, I want us to be aware of tonight, is exactly what happened. I'll be showing you at least two or three clips. We will just go through them, run through them. And at the end of the day, it is just for information purposes. And obviously, you out there, you have the prerogative to draw your own conclusion. Yeah? So we'll be touching on that. Uh, second, in terms of a discussion tonight, we heard in Antigua and Barbuda that a brother crossed the floor. He left the, U the UPP, that is the United Progressive Party, and moved across to the ALP, that is the Antigua Labour Party. And I'm talking about Mr... Anthony Simon, and so I have waiting on the line whenever I make that contact with him, Brother Veer Bird III, that is a very erudite brother, an esteemed lawyer practicing in Antigua and Barbuda. He will be giving us his thoughts as to what he thinks about that crossing of the political floor, as it were, by Brother Simon, yeah? So that is what we'll be discussing when we reach to the regional matters of things. Obviously, the conversation will take place as well on the national front, whereby I will be recapping, as it were, for those of you who did not hear this week, Wednesday gone, that is. Wednesday, yes, Wednesday. Where uh, a very unfortunate, very tragic, and I am adding here as well, a very barbaric, situation took place in the Castle Bruce area whereby a man was shot dead on the street and so I'll just recap what happened there and so you guys could be better apprised but as I always say your guess is as good as mine as it relates to the continuation now of that matter and other matters as it pertains to the law and order business in Dominica especially where justice must be served. So we'll be touching on that in terms of recap. 
Also, I will be touching on the much talked about video, the 45 second clip that made the wrongs with yours truly last week. I heard that was the talking point on a radio station in Dominica for some time. Many persons called in and said their piece on what I had to say on a live of mine, I think, two weeks back. I'll be, I'll be letting you guys hear. If you did not know, I'll be punching it out there. But what I want to say straight up on the bat in terms of setting the record straight, that whoever, whoever did this in terms of doctoring, cutting, adding, whatever it is to my voice or my intention based on what I said, I just view this as political mischief. And so you guys know yourself. And so we'll be getting into that sometime later in terms of me just trying to clear the record as it were. When it comes to me, there's nothing really to clear. But I know a lot of you have been punching that my way, have been sending that my way for WhatsApp. Lofty, what's going on? Lofty, what's going on? And so just to allay affairs as it were, I will be um, just going in that direction to sort of clear the air and move on from there because that is just... Horseman young, as it were, political horseman young. But in the interest of you, the Dominican public, I will clear that air. All right? Uh, finally, we will be giving you an idea just who will be on the Civic Vibes program that is tomorrow, so you can stay tuned for just that as well. Yeah? All right, Dominicans, let us get going here in the interest of time. We know time flies very, very fast. Let us go to our first order of business as it will, as it pertains to the, the international story that I spoke of where Mr. Donald J. Trump, an attempt was made on his life on the 13th, I believe, yes, the 13th of July, early up in this month, and, and that basically had the world talking, yeah? So let us mean, let me just go through some clips here with you so that you can get a better understanding of what I want to draw to your attention in just a bit, yeah? I should. Again, Dominicans, welcome on board. Those of you who are here already, always appreciate the time, yeah? I think we have this queued up here. Let me just see if I could. Sorry about that, people. My computer is kind of slow this evening. Yeah, okay, I think it is right here. Okay, let me just pan that camera on that PC now so we can get things cracking, yeah? Where you? Right here. All right, boom. Okay, we can, we're just going to run through this and then we will do a chit chat and move on. Jay Trump! Yeah. On Saturday, July 13th at 6.02 p.m., former President Donald Trump takes the stage at a rally in Butler, Pennsylvania. Approximately 11 minutes later, he will leave the stage having survived an assassination attempt. Here, we show you what happened in those 11 minutes from multiple angles and perspectives, captured by both CNN's cameras and witnesses at the rally. CNN has seen footage taken by spectators with the official feed of the Trump rally by matching the audio of Trump's onstage remarks, which can also be heard in the videos filmed by rally goers. This is a big brand. This is a big brand. Minutes after Trump says this, at 6.09 p.m., a person just outside the rally spots and begins filming what appears to be a man crawling on a roof. Yeah, don't come off the roof. Look. There he is right there. Yeah. Right there, see him? He's laying down, see him? Yeah, he's laying down. For several seconds, spectators attempt to draw attention to the man on the roof. The building is located approximately 400 to 500 feet away from the rally stage. We have, we have, we have, we have, we have, we have, a 
spokesperson for the United States Secret Service, told CNN that the agency did not personally sweep the building, but instead leaned on local law enforcement to conduct security at that location. The Pennsylvania State Police said that they were not responsible for the area where the building was located. CNN has reached out to the local Butler County Police Department for comment, but has not heard back. They're getting better with time. My guys, take a look at that chart. Take a look at the arrow on the bottom. See the big red, red arrow? Trump. All right, folks, that is where things are going to get very interesting, yeah? Trump now, at his podium, addressing his crowd, turns to the right now, pointing in the direction of some campaign paraphernalia that he wants his audience attention, right? Take a listen. Ask the staff to pull up a chart on a nearby screen to show the audience Border Patrol statistics. Trump will later say that his decision to turn his head away from the crowd, something he says he rarely does at rallies, so that he can look at that chart, caused the would-be assassin to miss and likely saved his life. Okay, folks, so, so basically... What you just heard the commentator, the reporter said, that is Mr. Trump reported to them saying, he at his rally doesn't normally, he rarely turns his head away from his crowd. But in that instant, he had to do that, turn to the right, make a sort of 90 degree turn of his head to point his people into the direction of that map or whatever he was showing them in terms of the, 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 the security of the United States where immigrants is concerned, right? So that is the reason why he had to turn his head. He said to the reporters, he thinks that that is the reason why he is still alive today. The turning to the right of his head. Now, let us bring back Trump some, some at least two or three, three frames back, okay? That's Trump here, two or three frames back. Trump is facing his crowd dead on. All right? So just, just sort of picture where I'm going with that. So that is him facing his crowd head on. He now leans to the right, pointing his people in the direction of his map. Okay? Let's hurry up. Okay, I think I went a little too far in terms of frame. Yeah? Okay, let's continue and there's some audio here. 6-11, shots ran out. So at 6-11, the reporter is saying, shots rang out. Now, the shots that rang out, it was about... Uh, 11 minutes. Trump hit that stage about 6.02, it was said. And about 6.13, the shots rang out. So, so he was on stage about 11 minutes doing his whatever it is with his people in terms of his campaign. Okay? Look what happened. Trump grabs for his ear, then gets down on the stage as he's watched by Secret Service agents. About a minute later, a spectator catches... Okay. Let's get back here. One frame. One frame, people. Yeah? One frame. Right here. Trump is here. Minutes, seconds after, you're going to hear the shots rung up. Okay. Right here. Trump turns his head. To the right, as I said, that is what he did. The shot rang out at just about 6.13 thereabout. Trump put his right hand to his right ear. And you could see based on what the people showed in terms of the, what the cameras caught. His hand was bloody, the side of his face was bloody, and part of his ear, the right ear, whatever wound he got there and it is said because of a flying bullet that was punched in his direction from a young man a 20 year old young man all right trump grabs for his ear 
then gets down on the stage as he is rushed by Secret Service agents. About a minute later, a spectator catches footage of other royal girls calling in for medical aid, indicating that an individual has been shot in the head. So basically, people, what happened based on what is reported here, a bullet basically grazed Trump head, hitting his ear. Now, people, um, I know things happen in life, but, but that one, it is very, very interesting. Okay? It is very interesting. So the commotion that you're hearing, and now Trump is down behind his podium, having been hit by that bullet, his ear, his upper ear, based on what we saw in, in, in pictures so far. And the commotion now is that people now are directing, I guess, hell, um, the people in the hospitality industry or the, the medical people there about, sorry, in the direction now of the crowd. They are saying that somebody got hit, somebody got shot, and it is alleged the person got shot in the head, all right, from bullets now, the, the, the rest of the fire from that young man. They are saying the man who later died was identified as Corey Comprator, a 50-year-old volunteer firefighter and father of two from Pennsylvania. Two other rally goers were in critical but stable condition two days after the shooting. During this time, the mic picks up someone saying that the shooter has been killed. As he gets to his feet, the mic also picks up Trump asking to put his shoes back on. He later told the New York Post in an interview that when the Secret Service came to his aid, they inadvertently tackled him out of his shoes. After rising to his feet, before leaving the stage, Trump raises his fist and appears to mouth the words, fight. Trump is then whisked away in a vehicle to safety. You can see the guy down. I, I think they hit him because the guy is. So All right, people, let me just pause that there. Okay, whatever commotion happened on stage with Trump in terms of he getting shot in his ear, his, 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 his security service agents came to him, punch him down to the ground, whisk him away. Here it is now. The, some people who were at that event is now reporting that a uh, guy on that roof, around 400, 500 feet away, they are saying that most likely he got shot. And who they say shot him? Well, the report is that the, the Secret Service agents who were supposed to be providing security for Trump and other people there, well, Trump primarily, they shot him. Um, there's a frame I want us to, there's a frame people I want us to get back to. Let me just see if I can get back to that to kind of put that into context here before we move on, yeah? Get the right here. All right. Um, where is that frame? Okay. You see this building, people? This building right here. It is that building that the report is saying that this brother, whoever, what's his name? Crooks. Mr. Matthew Crooks. Report is saying that the brother climbed that building during the campaign rally action, okay? People said that they saw him climbing that building, made an attempt to alert police. As a matter of fact, they alerted police on the ground. It is said, it is reported, a police went up on that building, saw the brother, the brother pulled a gun at him or pulled whatever air rifle at him. And the police went back down. Basically did not or could not tackle Mr. Crooks on that building. Now, folks, I, I, I know some things happen. 
And we have to take into consideration the distance. And remember, it is reported it is local police, not the secret agents of Trump that went up that building. As a matter of fact, they said they did not clear that building. They had nothing to do in terms of clearing of that building because that was outside the zone from which the meeting was, was, was happening. They, they left it to the local police to clear that building, to secure that building, to do whatever to that building. And lo and behold, a brother with an AR-15 rifle went up, climbed that building, laid down prostrate on the roof of that building, around four to 500 feet away, and it is reported, took aim at Trump on his podium, fired in Trump direction, and, and the bullet, or one of the bullets, basically clinched Trump ears. Trump is saying, that is Trump here. Trump is facing his crowd dead on right here, face front. In that frame here, Trump is looking at a 90 degree angle now to the whatever it is, the poster, whatever it is, the map, whatever it is he was directing his people to look into. Right? Now, what I want us to, what I want us to focus on for a little minute there is I am, I, am, I, am, I am going by whatever the reporters say. Let, let, let us say it is true for argument's sake. Trump's head is now turned at a 90 degree. So which means, originally, if Trump had stayed, did not turn his head to the right. If Trump had stayed in the original position, and that guy had to take a shot at Trump, obviously... Just by the mere appearance of it, that brother on that roof would have been aiming at Trump's side of his head. Because here, Trump is facing like that, normal position. Trump turned to pan the crowd in the direction. So, so, so he is now turned 90 degrees. The bullet it says pass on his right side of his ear, passing right across here and grazed him on the right ear in the process. Okay? So, so, in my mind, I am saying, based on what is reported, if Trump did not move that head as he is saying or suggesting to us, because his head being straight on watching the crowd it, 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 it gives that shooter, or should I say alleged shooter, much more, much more image, much more of Trump, so that he could, he could um, get a clear shot. Okay? Now, Trump turning his head now, basically sort of narrowed the, the area that this guy, this crooks guy, had to shoot at or had to shoot towards Trump. And it is said, Trump himself said, that because of that 90 degree turn, the bullet did not get him in his head or by his temple area or at the back of his head where he would have much more exposed to the brother and so your guess is as good as mine in terms of you making sense of what is reported to you let us roll on now to let us roll on now to another to another slide so that we can examine the next slide and move on yeah an act of domestic terrorism i want to show you guys something there Okay, so that is the building a little closer up. And so right on top here, right here, it is said that this brother laid down and took shot, took aim at Trump, right here. Okay? Now, remember people, 
Um, there's one of the frames. I think I passed it. There's one of the frames that uh, maybe we'll get to it maybe a little later. There's one of the frames whereby the security guys for Trump, the secret agents guys, they are on a rooftop. And it is said that it is these guys on that rooftop who was behind Trump, behind him, behind his podium in that direction, took off that guy, eliminated the threat on the roof, 400, 500 feet away in like a minute's time. So the sharpshooters were on the roof, an elevated area as well. Like this brother here, in terms of two of them on that elevated space, in that elevated area. My question here is, how could a man climb a roof? People said they saw him climbing the roof. They alerted police. Police went, a police officer is said went on top of that roof. And because of the guy pulled his gun, aimed his gun at the police officer, the police officer went back down that roof. And this man still had the time to take shots at Trump at his podium. That to me, Dominicans, I find it kind of weird, but it is what it is. I'm just bringing it to you as reported your, your judgment is yours to make. Let's continue. Now, this is an important frame I want us to get. Eh? This one. Okay, this is a very important slide I want us to get as we bring this session to a wrap. Um, one of the CNN reporters now talking to a, a photographer, he, he's right here, who basically in the commotion, in the heat of the action, had the presence of mind to take some photos whilst all that commotion, shots firing and Trump docking and security agents diving and, you know, screaming in the crowd and everything. This brother here had the, had the nerve to take some shots. Let's continue on. I'm Doug Mills is where he often is when news is happening. That's him here. He captured the chilling moment as a bullet appeared to whiz past the former president's ear. Okay. Now. That is where I want us to get at people as well. You see here, the photographer that I just showed you, he said he took a photo in the heat of the moment and it is, 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 is encircling here what appears to be a bullet passing, passing at full speed on the right side of Trump's head. Okay, now, if you watch that, if you watch the projection of that bullet, people, if you watch the projection of that bullet, and, and, and that is what I deduce, I don't know what you will deduce after it is shown to you. If you watch the direction of that bullet, it is as horizontal to me as ever. That is how it looks in the photo, the still photo that the guy took. That is how it looks. That bullet is not, is not in a, in a, in a descending position. It is not in an ascending position. It is to me going quite horizontal in terms of the projection from where it came. Now, that is Trump left ear. Trump right ear would be on the other side of his head. The wound that I saw, and that is what I saw. You maybe saw something different. The wound that I saw, Trump wound is to me, is to the upper part of the right ear, like up here. Trump ears to me is large enough. No ridicule. And if you look at the projection of that bullet, if you look at the direction of that bullet, if you bring back, like try to imagine that bullet passing at that speed, 
on the right side of Trump, you be the judge and give me an idea where of Trump's body, even if it's graze, it would be grazing his body, as is said or as is seen in photos. Give me an idea where that bullet would hit Trump. Now, what I want to say to you guys as well, they had other shots. So maybe that shot, it wasn't the shot that grazed Trump air. I want to be clear on that as well. Maybe it was one before or one after. But that bullet that that brother captured here in photo, to me, I am saying to you guys, it couldn't be the bullet that caused the damage to Trump right here on the upper end of Trump's ear. So it had to be either one prior or one after. And Doug Mills is here with me now. And one, I'm so great. This brother is a photographer here that basically captured the, the, the moment. And so a discussion has been had with him now by a reporter as to really and truly how he felt and everything that went on into that whole bizarre situation. What I just want to say, people, in terms of bringing that session to a wrap as well, is that to me, Dominicans, it, and that's my opinion now, the Secret Service guys, some of them were on rooftops because it had to be someone or some people or, or an agent on an elevated area that had to take out that brother. And so I am just asking myself now, and I've been asking myself the question, how could a lone gunman climb a building elevated to basically the same level as the secret agent's guys, well armed, ready to hit at the fire? And this brother would have the audacity, the white brother, what's his name, Crooks or whoever his name was, Climb that building. Late prostrate on that building. People on the ground said they saw him climbing that building. Alerted police on the ground. A police, it is said, went up to that building and did not engage or could not engage. Climbed down that building and that brother had enough time to fire six whatever shots grazing Trump in the process and killing one man in the process and having others critically injured. Dominicans, I just said I would bring that to you guys' attention. Um, we saw it. We saw it. But it is always good to do your own analysis of what went on in terms of things that you see and hear. And, and don't let anybody just shove down things your throat. No, I'm not saying here that is not a, or that wasn't a, a, a real event. I'm not saying that. I know some of you are bent on. It was a stage event. It was a political stunt to put him up in the pools. Whatever it is, whatever your decision is or your, or, or your word is on that is left to you. I just decided to bring you guys at least some photos so that maybe you you missed something in terms of what went on and um, it's all well and good Trump is alive and well and we will see how November 4th turns out to be with he being the nominee for the president of the of America where Joe Biden is as well in terms of he being the Democratic um, a nominee. All right? Uh, your guess is as good as mine, Dominicans. That's all I want to show you this evening and, and leave it right there. As I said, in terms of the politicking part of it now, I don't want to get there because if we get there, then we will not be able to finish the program this evening. All right. 
So thank you very, very much for your eyes and ears each and every time. Let me now just see before I leave here if I can take some comments from you guys in terms of what you are saying on the live feed. Yeah? Um, Inez, you are here, William says, it was said that the shooter was a supporter, so it could be. He was following in order to do the act so that it won't be suspicious. That is your take, Inez. Uh, who else here is writing? Eddie G. Gordon writes, where's the Secret Service aircraft for surveillance set of damn liars? People stay woke in capitals. Don't leave them fool you. The next revolution is going to televise. We will not sing Kumbaya, my lord. Overcome not this time. We will meet them halfway in this fight for racial justice and freedom. That is Mr. Gordon's point here. Ferdinand Lawrence, you're right here. In less than two minutes, the security call all clear. In less than two minutes, how could they know that it was only one shooter? A very good question or questions, Brother Fred, um, Lawrence. You may be up to something here. Um, Desri, John, good evening to you. You're listening. Thank you very much. Let me see if we can take some more. James Stephen, stop calling him, brother. Well, James Stephen, thank you for your comment, but these are my words, huh? You may not want to call him brother, I did. That is what under the bridge. Let's move on. Uh, Aini says here, the question is, why did, why did the crooks guy do it? He was a trained shooter too. Aini is based on what I read, based on what I listened to. Again, it is reported speech. He wasn't a well-trained shooter. That is what I can add to your, your question or scenario here. Marshall Marshall Lawrence says it was live bullets which killed and injured two others. That was no acting. Uh, who else? Okay, let me just see if I can get some more comments from some other people here. Mali Osprey says, this is what hap this is what that have to happen to who's that Mali? PM, who's the PM? We are not condoning any violence here. Mali. Um, Marshall Marshall says, come on now. We are not children and should not wish anyone harm. Trump was saved by seconds after he looked right, after he looked to his right. Ah, we have some people over and over making comments. So let me just see if I get some fresh comments here before we move, yeah? Um, okay, I think that is all I can see from here for now. So that is it in terms of the comments that I can see. We're going to move on, Dominicans, to we're going to move on to yet another segment of the conversation as we are moving on. We're going to the regional aspect of things. All right, let me just see now if I can make contact with my brother here from Antigua. That is Mr. Viebre the Third, as he will give us an update as to the scenario that panned out with Brother Simon crossing the floor. Hello. Mr. Bird. Hey, Lofty. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty, pretty well. How are you, my brother? I'm all right. Not bad at all. Hold on, let me just increase your volume here so that the people can hear you loud and clearer. How is that? Anything? Yes. Sounding good? Much better. All right, great, great. So as I asked, how are you doing, brother? How is it? All is well with me right now. I'm not in Antigua at this moment, but um, yeah, it's some little of political um, upheavals we have in the last, what, um, 96 hours, I'd say. Yes, about there. Well, you are, live, you are live on my program, and so again, I want to thank you on behalf of the many people listening and viewing. Uh, just wanted an update from you, Brother Bird, as to the political situation that has unfolded, what, two weeks, uh, what? Yeah. This week? Where yes, this week. Where Brother Anthony Simon 
cross the floor yes. from, from UPP to and, ALP. And, uh, Anthony Smith. Anthony Smith. Anthony Smith. Sorry, I keep saying right, Simon. Yes. Sorry. Thanks for the correction. Not a problem. Not a problem. I always get him mixed up myself too. Um, he's a he's a newcomer, so I'm not surprised you don't really know him or familiar with the name. Yeah. But what happened in Antigua and Barbuda? I must say good afternoon, good evening, Dominica. Hope everyone is well and staying safe and prepared for possible um, hurricanes in this hurricane season. Stay safe. Um, what happened in Antigua and Barbuda is that we have 17 constituencies. There are 16 in Antigua and one in Barbuda, which makes up the 17 seats. The Labour Party, since the election of the 18th of January, 2023, the Labour Party won the election with nine seats. Yeah. Then they had the UPP, the main opposition, which had six seats. One seat was by the independent asset Michael, and then one seat was by um, the BPM, Barbuda People's Movement. And they won their seat um, party, but uh, the, the representatives called Trevor Walker. So you have nine by the ALP, six by the main opposition, one by the BPM, Barbados People Movement, and then the independent asset maker. So the numbers are uh, razor thin. It's nine to eight in total for the opposition. Mm -hmm. Are yes. you hearing me? Yes, loud and clear. Yes, um, since then, um, they have really been jockeying to see who is going to take government in Antigua and Barbuda because we've got word that two of the senior members of the ABLP may be ill or not, not doing well, Sir Robin Yearwood and Muller, Sir Rob, uh, Malwin Joseph. I think what happened, uh, UVP were a little complacent and they just were waiting and not agitated, waiting for these individuals to retire or resign or be declared not capable of fulfilling their duties in their posts. Mm -hmm. And I think they, they rested on their laurels of the elections. And what has happened in the last night, six hours in Antigua, is that one of the gentlemen who ran on the, the UPPs um, on the campaign, Anthony Smith, he won in a constitution called All Saints West. He has defected. He's resigned from the United Progressive Party on Monday. And, and by Tuesday, he was sworn in at Government House as an independent, and he um, has been given a ministry, the Ministry of Agriculture and Blue Industries by the, the incumbent government, the ALP. So he went to Parliament this week and all, um, and uh, I think he actually attended a cabinet also. So the situation is, is that um, the numbers are now nine for the ALB, five for the UPP. Asset Michael is an independent. Mm -hmm. Mr. Smith has no, who calls himself uh, an independent, but he supposedly has a ministry by the government. So therefore, 99.9% .9 certainly, whatever they, they are voting, he will side with them. And then the BPM has an, uh, a one, one representative for Barbuda also. That is what has happened in Antigua and Barbuda, but it was so tactically well planned out in that Monday we were watching, we heard about four o'clock in the afternoon that the man had defected and had resigned from the, U, the UPP, but none of his colleagues, not even my cousin Sean Bird, you saw um, Algon and Watch Serpent, they were on live at various times um, and saying they never saw any letter. The executive of the UPP never saw any letter. And the letter, people had the letter before his own colleagues even knew that the man had left them. And they were on the radio and on, 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 on social media saying, give him a chance. I've spoken to him at 12 o'clock. He still says with the UPP. And it's just unfortunate. You saw it played out in real time where the man's own colleagues did not know, but several members in the society were reading the letter even while they were on their lives saying, no, the man hasn't left the party. We haven't seen any letters yet. That is what so, has happened this week in Antigua Barbados politics. A lot of people are saying with, with Mr. Smith is that they, they were, that's what they, they did not vote for him to do this. They voted for him in, um, to be uh, a representative um, against the Antigua Labour Party. What has happened is that 
he's given his reasons why he left. He said, made some comments that he, he was getting bullied or they had their um, convention in the UPP sometime around April or so. And after that, that he was on the losing side, didn't get the person that he wanted, who, who was backing him or he was backing to become the leader of the party. And he felt there was some internal strife that they were picking at him or they were bullying him. And those are some of the reasons what he gave why he had, he bounced, he, he left, left the party. But one of the, one of the most important things, and I think what is his biggest error, and where he's going to have a hard time to hold that seat in the future, is that he never consulted anyone. He never consulted his branch. He never consulted some of the senior people in the constituency, letting them know that that was his position where he was getting bullied and how do they, how should he, he respond? And so he that is that is they cut his cut his deal. That is a question on my mind to ask you, but you basically answered it already. <laughs> Did he consult yeah, any a, of his constituents? Read that move. Or the people who voted for him. If 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 the consult if he had consulted, I believe that would have gotten back to the party. Mm -hmm. And they would have known. But the, the, the level of blind side that the party got, you know. I am not. I am not a part of the UPP, but I felt. I felt for them. I felt. I felt for his colleagues. That's a terrible thing to do. Many of the women, the men and them are annoyed who voted for him, but the women are taking it strong. I mean, just on yesterday, I got a, um, a text from from a woman in Birmingham. She 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 she's in Birmingham, but she lives in that country. She lives in. She has a home in that constituency. And she's so burned by what he, he did. She did not vote. She came out. She, she, she was already registered. She voted for him. And she was like, I, he has to give me back my vote some way, somehow. He has to, to account for it. That's not what I voted for. You know, so he's in turmoil. I believe he went on some of the radio show trying to placate people and so on. But I believe when, when they brought it to his attention that we voted for you, we supported you, your branch campaign night and day for you. People came from other areas in Antigua to campaign for him as a new blood, somebody fresh to politics. And then you go and cut your deal in a smoky back room and then come and tell us that you're doing it for the people because at the end of the day, you are the Minister of Agriculture and at Gaston Brown at the, the swearing-in swear ceremony um, down at Government House promised him that the roads are going to be fixed. So. It's a win-win situation that um, the people will have some get something out of it. They will get proper roads. Hmm. So, so have that ever happened in Antigua before in that form, in that fashion? Based on your memory, have uh, moved over in our system. I don't know if it's similar to yours, um, hmm. constitutional-wise. You can become an independent, but if you're elected under the UPP. Um, party or uh, one party, you can go and join another party. You understand? You are, you are elected under the UPP, you can become an independent, but you can't cross the floor and just take, take your, your representation with the, another party. Well, what I can tell so, you, it, it, it happened in Dominica sometime back, whereby somebody <laughs> won, won on the party's ticket, and they basically mm. moved over across the floor, as it were, supporting the government side. So it happened in Dominica. I am no, not too did sure. He join, did he join the other side or he, did he just support them? No, whoever did, they join. They join. Mm. But in they your... join. No, we, you, we can't do that in Antigua. Our country doesn't allow you to cross the floor. The most you can do is become an independent. But in, in your case, you're saying that Mr. Smith. He did not join because your constitution doesn't allow that. But he, he, right. he's, he's just an independent, you said? He's an independent, but he's part of the, 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 the ruling government's cabinet because they gave him uh, um, uh, a portfolio for um, agriculture and I think blue industries. Okay. So basically, at the end of the day, if he wants to keep that ministry, he's going to vote with them. Yeah. Yeah. So any... I don't want you to get yourself in problem based on not knowing the facts, but anything you hear in that came Mr. Smith's way as a result of that quote-unquote crossing of the floor to be now independent, aligning himself with the, well, with the government? Anything that you hear in on the ground? 
what we heard is that the bullying and that they, they were, um, the, the, the person that won, the, the leader Pringle, was basically counting heads and seeing who was for him and who, who was against him. I was trying to, to impose his, his way because he was the new leader now. So he was probably settling scores or whatsoever. I don't really know about the UPP and, and their business. But what we did hear is that Mr. Smith was uh, promised a ministry. He is getting um, um, 15,000 beer boats a month as a minister. And we were told in order for him to, to resign from the UPP, um, he was going to collect um, the amount of $6 million. Wow. $6 million. But the six, the six million EC dollars is um, staged. It's um, a million a year for six years. So they kind of, you know, they, they just have those rasta men and the beast and the white women, those them, they call them the rent a drink. Yes, yes, yes. Well, yes. Mr. Smith is like a rent a drink. <laughs> He's a rent a politician. That's it, that's it. It's a new, it's a new phenomenon that they're creating. <laughs> he said to the president, you rent them out for fun. They didn't give him the money six times because you could always back pay them. So they said every year now, at the end of the day, you get your Christmas. Here's your million dollars for six years. But, 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 just, just broadening that conversation a little bit, um, Brother Bird, that is a situation that keeps happening in our region ever so often, whereby you see that crossing of the floor or changing of allegiance. At the end of the day, everybody have their own personal choice. But if you, are, right. if you go up on a ticket, say you're representing people, the people put their trust mm -hmm. in you to represent them at a party level. How mm -hmm. could it be? How could it be you just take those these people votes and move across and not even have a conversation with them prior? That is his biggest mistake. I don't think he can live that down. I think it, in hindsight, you know, after the, the, the smoke will fill the room, the smoke comes out of the room, after the, the deed is done, in hindsight, I believe Mr. Smith must be worried if he's going to be the, the 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 candidate, whether it's on the UPB ticket or he runs as an independent, the next time around, whenever the election is called, I believe he has to be very careful because that is something that everybody is complaining about. Who did you consult? Because nobody knew about this. You never complained that, that they, you had difficulties inside the party. You never complained that after the convention that to do your duties were, 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 were difficulty with the party executive as you are claiming now. But how, so how do you justify you made that decision by going to or them, uh, Gaston Brown and they had be calling you and that was the best thing for the constituency or yourself? So well, at the end of the day, politicians at the end of the day are always doing it for themselves. And this is a clear example where he forgot his constituency, but remembered him after the deed was done. And I heard that yesterday he was on a talk show and he nearly reduced the tears when they brought it up to him. But what, what, what do you think can sort of curb that kind of situation? Now? Let, let, let us bring it back to some sort of solution. How do you think that can be stemmed? Um, last thing first, yeah, I'd say, it looks like a tactical um, feat that Mr. Brown was able to achieve here, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But when you're looking at the, the sort of money and the sort of deception that had to be um, deployed in order to make the Labour Party a little safer in government, because the minister for um, or say, uh, um, St. Philip's North, uh, Robin Ewell, he hasn't been an island. Suppose he's coming back an island. He's not well. He's the longest serving um, representative probably in the, the history of the West Indies. He, went, he won his seat with my father on Leicester in 1976. You understand that he's yes. never lost. He won, he won last say, in 2023 also and won his seat again. So, so the he desperation has, he, to... Let, let me ask you, he has been a minister since? Or 1976. In I, would, I just came out of Pampers when, when, yeah, when he won. Wow. That's the year I was born, you know, bro. Yeah. So we're talking about 47 years in that business. What's his name? Robin Yeo, I'm sorry. Robin Yeo. Robin Yeo. Okay, Rob. Yes, I, I think I heard that name. Yes, continuously. It's never lost. It's not like we had a, a gap in, in, in those years. You wow. understand? Wow. Yes. 
So that's nearly half a century of one man in a position. So in, 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 they said he has claimed he has failing health and the dementia and all these things. So Mr. Brown, in all, in all, um, in all honesty, had to safeguard his physique. He could not be dependent on this man being able to fulfill his duties. Okay. So therefore, there, that, there's a desperation there to safeguard um, a vote in your favor or a number in your favor. Mm -hmm. Somebody that can, can come to your assistance in parliament. Um, what I would say in regards to curbing this whole matter, I believe we can always legislate new laws, we can always have new regulations and way politicians conduct themselves. But if the law is there and the people are not willing to stand up, the law is irrelevant. Yeah. There are many laws in the books in all these islands in the Caribbean, but the will to carry out the law is what our territories are lacking. And I always say this, it's about convention. We have the laws that we ha have from colonial times and we have since our independence, we have created our own laws, but I provide the, the will, the political will of the, the, the electors to hold their politicians accountable is lacking. And I've always said it's the convention. The politicians must see that the people are willing to stand up and say, Never again. This sort of this sort of behavior will not be tolerated. And I'll give you an example of in the United Kingdom, it is convention. They had a king, King John, and King John said that his rule was divine. It is God gave him to rule over these, these British Isles. He was taking away the power from the nobles. The nobles said that they wanted to be judged. They had the Magna Carta and they wrote up their rules that they wanted to be, to be judged if they did wrong by their peers. Not by the common man. It wasn't even about common man um, judging them. They wanted to be judged by their peers. The king said, but I am the king. I have good judgment because it's coming from God. And they were like, you know, well, that's good for you to say. You're, gonna, you're going to have your favorites and you're going to want to victimize people. The nobles basically told him, if you do not sign on on the Magna Carta, well, meet us on the battlefield, Ronnie Mead, and we'll settle this by, by combat. We'll bash your head and we'll kill you. Not to say that we have to kill anybody, but the electors, the people, the, 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 the citizens of these territories, these islands, these small island nations, have to set conventions now in our young democracies. Because they're not mature democracies as yet. I mean, I hear the politicians are oh, we are mature democracy. No, we are not. We need to establish the conventions where the people will stand up, they will pick it, they will march, they will vote against individuals, wipe them out of politics forever when they do this sort of stupid. So I won't go down as a lawyer. I can, we can always draft all these things, these nice um, laws to make people know how to conduct themselves in politics. But I believe it needs to be a convention that when they think of Anthony Smith, they will see the next occasion he runs that he doesn't even have enough votes. He, he, he needs to get enough votes, the 12 votes, to get nominated, but don't even get one vote at the election. And that could make him understand that that's sort of politics, where that's going. Talking about. You follow what I'm saying? Yes, I'm following what you're saying, and, and, and I quite agree with what you said. Talking about convention, as you touched on it, I, I don't know how much you know about the Labour Party in Antigua, but is it a practice that they normally keep conventions to choose their leaders and designate positions, and how long ago was, if any, of these conventions held? Yeah, so they had a conventions before the last elections to, to, to what do you call it again, they had their their candidates and they had to um, uh, what's the word, ratify the candidates yeah. and, the, and the new positions on the executive and all the various uh, bodies. So they've had a convention then. I believe that a convention on the Labour Party is every two years. So a convention should be coming. But before the last convention, before the election, they hadn't held one in about six or seven years. Okay. What has happened, Mr. Michael wanted to have a convention, but he felt that after he fell with, with Mr. Brown, the Prime Minister, that he could hold a convention challenge if that person child put up some other politician to challenge Mr. Brown and take back the leadership of the party. Mr. Brown did not feel safe in holding a convention until the last minute when all of them needed to be ratified as the candidates in order to go to the polls. So they left it towards the last, the last minute 
and then Asset Runners Independent, so he's not with the party. And that is how he was able to escape from probably being voted out as the, the leader of the party. Okay. All right, I, I asked you that question wanting to know of you guys in Antigua because we in Dominica, especially where the Dominica Labour Party now is concerned, the, the twin party of the one in Antigua, mm -hmm. Uh, right. Word on, word on the ground is that they have not had a convention to ratify anything mm -hmm. in, in more than 15, 10, 15 years about. So it is quite, if you read your, it is quite if interesting you read that what you, yes. told, what you told me a while ago. Yes. Yes, what I was going to say is, sorry to cut you off there, but if you find the, the constitution for the, the Dominican Labour Party, it has to mention about conventions. Uh, what I do know, the Labour Party, even on the Leicester Bird, they got around that, that matter by when they were out of time to hold their convention. One of the first things they did at the convention was to um, ratify the lateness of the convention and to have everything to be um, viewed as, as um, normal and within time. So they themselves clarified their their lack of holding a convention by passing a vote that all matters will be deemed to be normal and to be to give themselves extended time and to rule as if the convention was held within time that is how they solve that problem okay all right well bro it has been done before it has been happened it has happened before they they miss many conventions in that years every two years it doesn't happen every two years okay all right, Brother Bird, anything else before I let you off the line? Anything else in terms of information you want to punch out? I, I would ask for the Dominicans in Antigua and Barbuda to keep a, a watchful eye of what is happening in Antigua and Barbuda because I do believe we're going back to the polls very soon. That's where in Antigua? They already, yes, the part, the individuals and them have, um, they, they are campaigning right now, you know, all of them are campaigning right now. And we 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 expect election probably next year. And 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 that would be around what time your election is due. Usually, sometime between January and, and March, before the tourist season comes to an end. They don't like to go to um, an election after uh, after March because the tourist season comes to an end and then people are out to work. So traditionally, and tickets between January and March. And and what is the year it is due? It is one is two to they had one last year, so it's 20, 2028. Oh. But because of the machinations going on on the ground right now, with certain of the, the elder politicians are getting too old to handle their job and suffering from dementia, the need, the desperation to go and uh, poach Mr. Smith. Yeah. Right? Things are a little uncertain. I believe the Prime Minister, with that tactical move, feels that he's less, a better, he, he is in a better position than he was after the election. And that was that was due to the only person persons to blame are uh, the executive of the UPP. They have done nothing in protesting, in in, 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 in bringing up this man's um, mistakes in government, and 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 putting a little um, fire to his feet. They have done nothing. They have sat back on their laurels and allowed him to poach one of their members. So I do believe now he feels he's in a better position, and he would probably prefer to act now than to wait till 2028. So, so is that a new phenomenon, uh, Mr. Bird, that um, politicians, prime ministers of that, like ours in Dominica, yours in Antigua, at their whims and fancies, although the constitution gives them that right to call an election like, you know, within a short space of time just to come back on the backs of the people, even if that is not the wish of the people? That is the Westminster system of government. As you can see, even Mr. S what's his name? S Sir Richie Sunak in, in the United Kingdom held one. Yeah. Even in France, M Macron held one. It is the Westminster system at work. It is designed the Westminster system to favor the, com the incumbent. The Westminster system is based on stability. It's not like France or France in the past or Italy where governments are changing and people crossing the island left, right and center. It is geared for stability and it favors the incumbent. Wow. Well, I guess it all boils back to the people and in any the democracy, people. it is the people's wish that really matters. And if the people are not prepared, as you say, to stand up and push back, then yes. I guess... We are doomed. 
selfish politicians will always take that easy route or route yes. out. Yeah? That's the bottom line, in a nutshell. Yeah. But bro, I want to thank you very much for at least hearing that if I said this, this evening. So we in Dominica could be much be made much aware of what is happening in re, the Smith political move in Antigua and other matters. Not a problem. Good evening, Dominica. Take good care and stay safe. Stay safe yourself. Anytime. Bye for now. All right. Bye bye. Take care. We're just taking a little musical break at this time eh? from our brother Nasio Fontaine singing the song Vain Thoughts. Yes, we're gonna get back in just a bit. <laughs> Looking for solutions, but yes, as Nasio said in song, they are sure heading for destruction. All right, folks, let us continue right here. It is 25 minutes past seven o'clock, which means we have 35 more minutes together. Let us get now into the next segment, whereby I promised you guys uh, the much talked about short clip, 35 seconds clip that made the wrong sometime this week pass, whereby yours truly was involved. A clip that was manufactured, that was doctored, that was whatever the person did with it, based on a live, like now. I did two weeks ago with you guys, and you heard me, those of you always follow, you heard what I said, you knew the intentions from where I came from. But you know, in the political arena, there are political mischief makers, and so these people will stop at nothing. They will stop at nothing. And I am, I am talking now about the henchmen and henchwomen on what passes for the Dominican Labour Party. They will do nothing. They will stop at nothing. They will go at all length to continue to try to deceive the Dominican people in one way, shape, or form. So we're going to get to that in just a while. But, but just before I go there, I have some information that I will be releasing to you guys next week. Once the good Lord above is willing and have me here, re some, unf some unfolding situation that has occurred and is occurring at the Dominica State Prison at Stock Farm. So you can please stay tuned for that information where I'll be getting it. I'll be bringing it to you guys. The facts of some of the things that are occurring. Yeah, so stay tuned for that indeed. Okay, let us now get into the much talked about clip that made the rounds on Kyrie FM, to be precise, last week, where the host of some programs played this clip over and over and over and over, basically tired out that clip, 
and had some of their callers call and chime in and just basically, you know, went awash, as it were, on yours truly in terms of his utterances back then. Let me see if I can get to that clip and then we will get the ball rolling here. Um, yes, this one, this one. I think I want to start. I think, okay, before I, before I, okay. I'm going to play, here was, here how it's going to be doled out. I'm going to play at least, at least 10 minutes in what I said last week that had a direct correlation with what was circulating on the media last week, okay? When I play that 10 minutes clip, just for recap, I'm going to go back to the doctored version of it and, and show you guys how, what, whoever did to try to contaminate, as it were, the minds of some Dominicans, all right? So, so take a listen to what I said last week, just 10 minutes. I'll put it into context. We don't need passion. If it's for passion alone about our political party or parties, this Roosevelt scary regime, rogue regime that is, would have been gone already a long time. If it was for passion, because Dominicans, we are very passionate about our politics. If you want to passionate people about politics, you come to Dominica. Okay, so here was I talking last week about passion and politics in Dominica. What I want to say now is that the, the people who normally do this cutting and this dissecting and this manipulation of people's video and audio, please take a listen now and you can, you can cut some more because I am a person, I always speak my mind. I don't care where the chips fall. I always speak my mind once I am comfortable in my spirit with what I'm saying. Let the chips fall where they may. And so nobody's in this country is going to muzzle yours truly, put me or back me in a corner for me to say what they want me to say. Now, nah, that can't cut it. All right? And so to Samantha Robinson and the others who had this clip of mine circulating around whole of last week, please call them, tag them, let them come now to hear what was said last week in the entirety. Not the 35 second foolishness that they decided to run with and, and basically made a mock out of things. Okay? If the airwaves, the radio airwaves are opened up for seven days a week, non-stop, the airwaves will be bombarded with passion, political passion. But can passion alone cut it? No. Passion is a key ingredient, but we have been missing the map. What we need in Dominica, it is for this very passionate people now to muster what it takes, put down what they have to put down and come around a table as Dominicans and put Dominica's interest first, not the call of the party, not the independence, not the, the Dominica and decide, you know something? Let us do something for country. And come up with now uh, an effective strategy. There have been strategies, but I can tell you the strategies have not been working because they have not been adhered to. And the strategy cannot be in one person's head. No. The 
group of people have to come decide you know something let us agree to disagree wherever we have fallen short in terms of whatever it is against each order decide to put that down lay down so if a brother did something to you in the year 2000 we are in 2024 whatever that brother or sister did to you in 2000 you should not have it on your heart still that is a form of retarding progress if a sister did something to you in the year 2014 we are in 2024 people time has rolled on and so should you and I Dominicans, I am right there. I am on the ground. I am in the, they say, he, he who is in the kitchen feels the heat. Well, I am in the kitchen. And so I know the kind of political temperature that Dominicans have within their marrows. I know the political tenderness. I know the political itchiness. I know the political sadness. I know the political, should I say, hatred? Yes, that some people in Dominica have for each other because of things that went on. As we say in Dominica, Nani Kana, donkey is back. It is still lingering and always festering ever so often. And if these people know exactly they know exactly what I'm talking about. They will not tell you. They know exactly what I'm talking about because they are the authors. They are the architects of what I'm talking about. And so this thing about unity, there cannot be a united front moving forward with so many things that you are holding on to. All right, Dominicans, let me just pause that there. Coming up in just a bit, it is the section, the 35 seconds section that was hatched out, that was cut out. From what you're hearing, and whoever, the political mischief makers, I call them, decided to put it in their own way and not only that not only that superimposing over or against my voice and thoughts their words in red and blue to suggest something that i did not say to suggest something that i did not intend to say and you know yourselves you know yourselves and so one of the people that I saw circulating that Hossmanion that political Hossmanion was none other than Samantha Robinson we all know well if you don't know I know where Samantha Robinson sits or lies or dwells politically. I know. So when it came from there, I had no... In my mind, I was very clear. There was no doubt in my mind what was this all about. A matter of fact, this week, when was it? Friday. And I like to be very clear and straight up. This week, at least one lawyer met me and said, you know something, Lofty, what I saw circulating of you on social media, if you did not say what these people said, 
in terms of what they printed over your name in red and blue. There's a money there awaiting for you in the court. But I told that lawyer, you know something? I am not, I am not in it for that. I am not in it for that. And so let these political mischief makers continue to be consumed in their political gutter. I am not there. I speak my mind and I speak it to the best of my ability based on what I am feeling on the ground. So if some people want to suppress their feelings and run behind a collar, that is not your truth. Okay? And so I made my... What I had to do. And I got someone for Robinson's telephone number. Just to call her. And say, Samantha, at least I saw you circulating that rubbish. You need to stop it. I got her number. Lo and behold, how the universe will pan out. Samantha and I have not seen each other in years. Maybe what? More than five years. We haven't seen each other. Physical, face to face. And when I got that number for Samantha, because I don't know Samantha number. I had to get it from somewhere. I got it. Lo and behold, last Friday, that's how the universe operates. I met Samantha somewhere in the stock farm area. And I said, Samantha, I went searching for your number because I have to give you a call. And so expect a call from yours truly anytime from now. And I, I know she knew exactly what that call would be all about. And even whilst telling about that call, Samantha Robinson had the audacity right there, right then. Right there, right then. To tell me or suggest to me Stop wasting your stop wasting time on the other side. We have room for you. I smiled at Samantha and I moved on. I say all that to clarify things because personally I know all of us in Dominica after going through this governance, the type of governance for 20 years, 20 something years. All of us, especially those who are directly connected to this rogue regime, all the rest, they are struggling to make ends meet. Some people choose to struggle to make ends meet by, by, by clinging to the table that their quote-unquote masters it from. They are satisfied with the crumbs that come from their quote-unquote master's table. Whilst others who are not in that vein politically choose to work hard to make ends meet. But, but the reality is all of us in Dominica and we're not talking right now. I'm not talking any political right. I'm talking about Dominicans now. Those who are not directly connected to the cabal. And they are benefiting personally. The, the, the creme de la creme of this country. We are all struggling to make ends meet. And so even people like these people. Who were circulating that foolishness. That political horseman. You know, I call it. They too, they are struggling to make ends meet. And some of them, they are comfortable by, by getting the crumbs that comes from the master's table, their master's table, 
when as I always say, they and we are the rightful owners of the bakery, figuratively speaking. So we should not be begging for bread. We should not be begging for crumbs. We should be demanding everything and anything that comes from the figurative bakery of Dominica, which is our country. But if you choose to beg, if you choose to grovel, if you choose to genuflect, if you choose to bend, if you choose to bow, it is up to you. That is your conscious decision. I am not one to bow. I am one to call it as it is, no matter where it comes from. And so, it is what it is. So let me now continue with that clip. And you're going to hear from there some of what was manipulated technically to suit their own political interests. I told somebody, and I'll repeat it here tonight, so that at least you guys can hear as well my thoughts on this one. As much as I want this cabal to go, I am equally as fearful as well. Another set of people take up the reins of political power in this country and within the first six weeks, everything will crash. I want to read that. As much as I want this cabal to go like yesterday, I am equally fearful as well that another set, another bunch of people would have picked up the political reins of power to run this country, promising that is. And within six weeks, the bottom of the basket would have dropped off. Because of what I said before. Alright, Dominicans, those of you viewing, those of you listening, basically, that last 45 seconds of what you just heard about me talking about my fear for any other set of people taking up the reins of power in this country and would be doing anything close to what we're going through now. That is my fear. Some people, the political mischief makers, chose to take that and made hay weather, made every song and dance like a theater of that. Okay? But I, I stand on my word and I am for Dominica, my country. Roosevelt Skerritt and his regime, to me, they should have gone already. And I'll repeat it tonight again for those of you who, who will be cutting and cutting and chopping and after this life. Roosevelt Skerritt and his regime should have gone many, many years ago. Since, in my mind, the days of his government and some of the actors there had to refund the treasury money in terms of their bubble. That time, Dominicans should have put down their feet and say, you know something? We cannot continue with that kind of thievery. And so to me, in my mind, I, I, I span it back there. So that is how long these people should have gone. And I am very clear about that. But I am also saying, if another bunch of people would today, tomorrow, whenever it is, because the, that cabal have to go. They must go. By the hook or by the crow. Any other people would come 
and take up the reins of power in this country and think that they would want to be doing a fraction or equally as how we are going through now. I am saying I am very, very fearful about that. And so I am putting all those to come on high alert that the Dominican public, we will not be tolerating that. And so that is my word. That is my fault. And so if you want to take it and cut it and paste it and do whatever if it, go right ahead. But these are my thoughts. When it comes to my country, I am very passionate about my country. I, I want the best for my country. And that is why I choose to speak out ever so often on behalf of my country and its people in terms of its development. We have not developed for the past how many years? A matter of fact, if you ask me, genuinely, we have regressed. We have regressed. And so how can I consciously come here every Saturday, every Sunday to speak to you and, 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 and come and sing Kumbaya? And I know what I have been through, what Dominicans have been through by and large over the past 20 something years. It will be against my conscience. I will not be able to sleep. And that is why I speak. As we wind down, because we're winding down in just a bit. Let me give you the concocted version now. You heard what I said. Let me give you the concocted version. And the superimposed words against what I said last week by some people. Let me download this here. By some people who chose to do whatever with my words. As much as I want this cabal to go. Let's start it from the beginning, Dominicans. Now you see what the, you, you 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 see the concussion? These people, they cut, they paste, they do whatever. And they superimpose their words now against my voice. Loftus Jira reaffirms it is safer with the Dominican Labour Party. My friends, did I ever come across like that in what you just heard a while ago? Stop that there. Let me cut that there. Again, another concoction right there. Inscripted over my words, which I did not say. Loftus alluded that the current UWP is no longer in the race. Did I ever mention any party in my statement before people? No. There's UWP. There's UPP. There is Freedom Party, there is APP, there is TUD. There is five parties in opposition vying for the leadership of this country. So why would these political mischief makers single out now one party, UWP, and, and want to attach me and my words to their deception? Just why? I know why.
Okay. The the concocters, they find they find the blue wasn't outstanding enough. They put it in the red Labour Party demonic color now for it to stand out more to the end. Because you know when you when you see or hear something last, it, 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 it gives that final impression, it stays with you. And, and, and I saw through that, and that is what was intended there to do. Okay? So that is why they highlighted what now in red. Loftus Duran reaffirms the safe of the Dominican Labour Party. Loftus Duran reaffirms the safe of the Dominican Labour Party twice at the end. So they want now to drive home in the minds and in the psyche of their listeners something that Loftus Duran did not say. Something that Loftus Dira did not intend on saying. And so, the, the, the political mischief, whoever it is that concocted it that way, I just decided to just take a little time off to just set the record straight. All right? Dominicans, there's nothing to be hot and bothered about. We know in which country we live. We know how the political temperature is in this country. Some people will not fight for family, but they'll fight for party. And when a people reach that state, then you know we are heading in the wrong direction, politically speaking. All right, let's down with this political horseman here and get back to business as we bring this program to a wrap in just a little bit. All right? Let me just take some of your comments here before I bring it to a wrap. We have like seven minutes to go. Yeah? Let me just see if I can get some of your comments before we bring this thing to a wrap. Joseph Gregor says, that's the same thing you're doing. I don't understand that comment, Gregor. Please break it down. Um, Trun Trun says, Boy Lofty, I must love these them comics. Mali Ostry writes, they are mischievous. Maureen Valmo says, Lofty Dira, all I can say, if it was me that had said what you say, Liar River wouldn't have enough water to wash my sins away on Dominica Politics Group or on my boy. Well, Maureen, I, I feel your pain, but you have to be able to speak and continue to speak your mind in your country called Dominica. Yeah? Mali Ostry writes here, they did the same to Mr. Linton, and the comments go on and on and on. Yeah? All right. Folks, tomorrow evening from 6 o'clock, that is on the Civic Vibes program, I will be um, the Civic Vibes team, headed by Alvin Thomas and myself. We will be dealing with, we will be dealing with um, brother, Dr. Thompson Fontaine. He's going to speak to us on two very important subject matters. One is the one is the situation that involves the independence of the of the people from Sahara and also the much talked about campaign finance reform. We know Dr. Fontaine is a financial guru. And so who is, who, who is better to speak about the big monies that should be, that must be, that ought to be regulated into our elections in Dominica? So we're going to have these two conversations with this very mm -hmm. esteemed brother tomorrow, the leader of the United Workers Party, that is Dr. Thompson Fontaine on the Western Sahara independence 
situation and also campaign finance reform. All right, so please gear up yourself for that conversation and also be ready to participate by your questions and your comments. Yeah? We're going to end with Brother Bob singing a very interesting number, Kama. Yes? Kama coming.